It's a line that weaves its way through centuries of British history, its path determined by life, death, and the law of the land. Britain's line of succession has seen kings and queens assume the country's most unique position of power, one after the other, in regimented yet ever-changing tradition. In a way, the rules are simple. When a monarch dies, the crown is automatically assumed by their eldest child, and their eldest child, in turn, becomes the new heir apparent. It's a concept called primogeniture, meaning firstborn. No one in history has waited longer to take the throne than King Charles III. Just four years old when he attended his mother's coronation, he remained heir for seven decades until becoming the oldest person ever to exceed the throne at the age of 73 in 2022. Save King. As he embarks on his reign, members of his family, his heirs and his spares each move up a rung on the ladder to the throne. At the top of that ladder is Prince William, the Prince of Wales. As the eldest son of King Charles, when the time comes, William will become king, and his wife, Catherine, the Princess of Wales, will become Queen Consort. So far, so traditional. But the next generation, William and Kate's children, George, Charlotte and Louis, actually represent an important and more recent change to the centuries-old rules. Until just 10 years ago, the UK used a system of male primogeniture, meaning the rules of succession applied to the firstborn and subsequent sons of each family. However, in 2013, the UK Parliament backed a move to change the system of male primogeniture to absolute primogeniture, meaning a female heir to the throne would not be displaced by her younger brother. It happened to coincide with Kate's first pregnancy, meaning that her firstborn child would become monarch no matter their gender. As it turned out, the then Duchess of Cambridge gave birth to a boy, Prince George, who's now second in line to the throne behind his father. Then came Princess Charlotte two years later, and Prince Louis three years after that. Because of the change to the law, Charlotte keeps her place as third in line to the throne, and Louis follows her as fourth. So that's the direct line of succession. But it doesn't end there, because where there's an heir, there is often a spare. Prince Harry is the second-born son of the king, entering the world as third in line to the throne at the time in 1984. Few could have predicted then just how tumultuous his relationship with his family and the institution of monarchy would become, culminating in an acrimonious break from the royals with his wife Meghan in 2020. Despite the pair dropping their HRH titles when they moved across the Atlantic, in terms of succession, birthright prevails. Harry keeps his place as fifth in line to the throne after the Wales family, and his own little ones, Archie and Lilibet, follow him in sixth and seventh place. Beyond the sovereign's children and grandchildren, the line of succession continues on and on, moving through the king's siblings, nieces, nephews, great nieces and great nephews, cousins and so on. It's unlikely that anyone on this list, other than Prince William and Prince George, will ever find themselves on the throne. Should George go on to produce his own heirs, this ancient tradition will flow through succeeding generations to crown future kings and queens that are yet to be born.